Today, it's a hit single, a hit tour, and a hit video. Barbara Howard talks with one pop star well acquainted with present day success, Duran Duran's John Taylor. <laughs> the internationally popular rock group Duran Duran temporarily separated from one another in 1985. Actually, they splintered into two separate bands called Power Station and Arcadia. Ostensibly, the reshuffling was to allow everyone an artistic stretch, and bass guitarist John Taylor stretched himself right into a big solo hit with I Do What I Do, the theme he wrote and sang for the movie Nine and a Half Weeks. months ago, if I thought that, uh, you know, there was going to be a John Taylor record on the market, I, I wouldn't have believed it. I didn't have any intentions of that happening. I mean, I'm not really competing for the throne by doing this record. I had no desire to go out on stage, centre, and pick up the microphone. <laughs> The song goes, I do what I do, and Taylor did. His theme from Nine and a Half Weeks not only made the charts, but did so well it outlasted the movie, which almost didn't survive the number of weeks in its title. Still, the steamy performances of Mickey Rourke and Kim Basinger made a sufficiently lasting impression to inspire Taylor's video, if in a roundabout sort of way. I've seen the film so many times, I'm getting so bored with it. <laughs> I started to watch the audience. They was in one of these small screen rooms. And, you know, it is so provocative to film at times, especially to women. I started to watch the way the audience was reacting, and, you know, the men. And, and it was actually quite an entertainment in itself, was watching the people and the, the way they reacted to it. How was it to do a song without the support of Duran Duran? Was it like riding a bicycle without the training wheels? After doing the power station and Duran and working, doing like two years with big bands, you know, working with a lot of musicians, it was nice to do something that was all at our fingertips. I didn't feel I had to prove any, uh, uh, any level of independence to anybody but myself, really, and I feel I've done that. So now it's back to the old drawing board as Duran Duran tune up again in unison for a new album scheduled for recording in June. Despite his successful burst of independence, Taylor feels there's a certain comfort in running with the pack. I'm looking forward to working with them again. I mean, Duran Duran has always been a fairly volatile situation because we've never had, we have a very uh, unnerving hierarchy in that we're all massive egomaniacs. Six months ago, I was telling people, no, I'm not, I don't know whether I'm interested. But, um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. The success of Duran Duran was so big and so fast. Did you have trouble handling the fame? I certainly feel a lot better having taken a breath. You know, you get to spend five years on the road in a pop group like that and you get your backside wiped for you, you know, and it's, you get everything done. And it's no, uh, you sort of lose all reality. Fortune. Have you been smart enough with your money so that you can afford to do what you want to do? Well, it's all relative, isn't it? I mean, if I wanted to go back to Birmingham and, you know, go live with my mum and dad again, yeah, I would never have to work again, but the lifestyle I quite enjoy now. There seems much more to do now. There seems much more can be achieved. An achiever he is, especially considering he's only 25 years old. And the vagabond lifestyle does indeed suit him, allowing him to go the distance and volunteer his talents, promoting the cause of Amnesty International. A long way for a middle-class boy from Birmingham, England to wander. But for Taylor and his childhood friend Nick Rhodes, there was never any doubt they'd arrive at their destination. With me and Nick, it was like the age before the chicken. We sat around, we used to sit around in Birmingham, we'd go to nightclubs and see bands and stuff. And after about two years of being training pop stars, we couldn't figure out why we weren't getting anywhere. So that was when we first decided to take up musical instruments. <laughs>